Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the different spanning tree versions. There have been a few different versions over time which have improved on the previous versions. Now, when I was first learning about this from other sources, it was super confusing, but there is actually a simple way to explain it, which is by breaking it down into the open standards and also into the Cisco proprietary versions. So that's what I'm going to do for you here, starting off with the open standards. The first original implementation of Spanning Tree was 802.1D. That uses one spanning tree for all of the different VLANs in the LAN. So just one instance for everything. That was improved with version 802.1W, which is rapid spanning tree. So that improved spanning tree by significantly improving the convergence time. With 802.1D, it can take up to 50 seconds for an interface to make sure that there's no loops there and transition into the forwarding state. With rapid spanning tree, that gets down to typically a few seconds. Rapid Spanning Tree also uses one Spanning Tree instance for all VLANs in the LAN. The latest of the industry standards is 802.1S, which is multiple Spanning Tree. That enables grouping and mapping VLANs into different Spanning Tree instances, which allows you to do load balancing. So to summarize those, 802.1D, the original implementation, it's got very slow convergence time, and it doesn't support any load balancing. 802.1W came out after that, which improved the convergence time, but also did not support load balancing. The latest one, 802.1S, builds on rapid spanning tree by keeping the improved convergence time, and it also enables load balancing as well. So let's have a look and see how the load balancing works. The access layer switches in our example here have got PCs which are attached in multiple different VLANs. We're going to make CD1, the core distribution switch 1, the root bridge for VLANs 10 to 19. So now traffic for those VLANs is going to be forwarded on the link to CD1 and blocked on the link to CD2. So we're looking at it from the point of view of our access layer switch access 3 here. So when we configure this, traffic for VLANs 10 to 19 are going to go up the uplink to CD1. CD2 is going to be made the root bridge for VLANs 20 to 29. So traffic for those VLANs is going to go up the link to CD2 and it will be blocked on CD1. So half my traffic goes in the uplink to CD1, half the traffic goes in the uplink to CD2. If either one of those uplinks fails, then all traffic will fail over to using the one link. And with MSTP multiple spanning tree, we're going to have two spanning tree instances running, one for each group of VLANs. So that's how it allows us to do load balancing. And those were the open standards. Okay, next up, let's look at the Cisco proprietary versions. First one is PVST Plus. This came out around the same time as 802.1D, but it included Cisco's enhancements. The main enhancement is it uses a separate spanning tree instance for every VLAN. So per VLAN spanning tree plus allows you to do load balancing the same as multiple spanning tree does. But because this came out around the same time as the original 802.1D, it's got the same issues with having a very long convergence time. 
PVST Plus is the default on Cisco switches. So the default on Cisco switches, you've got a separate spanning tree instance for every single VLAN, and it's got slow convergence time. The next Cisco version was Rapid per VLAN Spanning Tree Plus. This came out at around the same time as 802.1w, which if you remember from the open standards was the second implementation, which had a faster convergence time. So Rapid PVST Plus also significantly improves the convergence time over PVST Plus. Like PVST Plus, it uses a separate Spanning Tree instance for every VLAN. VLAN. Now, MST, the industry standard, with that you can group multiple VLANs into the same spanning tree instance. But with the Cisco versions, PVST Plus and Rapid PVST Plus, they use a separate spanning tree instance for every single individual VLAN. So looking at the load balancing with PVST Plus or Rapid PVST Plus, same example that we covered before. And again here, CD1 is going to be made the root bridge for VLANs 10 to 19. CD2 is the root bridge for VLANs 20 to 29. So VLANs 10 to 19 go over the left-hand path up to CD1. VLANs 20 to 29 go over the right-hand path to CD2. So, so far it's looking exactly the same as MST. The difference is with MST, we grouped the VLANs. So with MST, we had one group going up the left-hand side, we had another group going up the right-hand side. So we had two spanning tree instances. With PVST Plus and Rapid PVST Plus, you can't group the VLANs, you have a separate instance for each one. So rather than having two total instances like we had with MST, here we're going to have 20 separate instances, one for each individual VLAN. So the Cisco versions, PVST Plus and Rapid PVST Plus, they put a bit more load on the switch because it has to calculate spanning tree instances at the VLAN level rather than being able to do it at the group level. Okay, so those are the different versions of spanning tree. For which versions will be supported on your switch, it depends on the particular model of switch that you're using. PVST Plus will always be supported, that will be the default. It will usually also support Rapid PVST Plus as well, and possibly, depending on the model of switch, it might also support MST, the open standard multiple spanning tree. One last thing to tell you, PVST Plus, which is the default on Cisco switches, will assign the root, designated, or alternate role to parts. We spoke about our root and our designated and our blocking parts in the last lecture. Just giving you terminology here. The alternate parts are your blocking parts with PVST Plus. Okay, that was the whole thing. We'll look next at how to actually monitor and verify spanning tree in the next lecture thanks for watching if you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now then you can enroll in my ccna gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description it also includes full study notes quizzes and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else